G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is a Suppressor's Crossbow. This is one of the new weapons added by Fallout 76, it's never been seen before, which is kind of nice. Unfortunately, like a lot of the other weapons that have been added by Fallout 76, the customization is lacking. But anyways, another thing new about this weapon is its legendary effect, never before seen from Bethesda. It reduces your target's damage output by 20% for 3 seconds. Now, I'm not sure if that stacks, whether you could make the damage output drop even more, or you could extend the um, effects of that enchant. But I don't think we'll be getting too much use out of that. I guess if there's a charging dude with a sledgehammer, we can shoot him with that and lessen the blow of his massive hammer, but... I don't really think this is the perfect thing for it. Moreover, this is a video sort of looking at what this thing can do. The suppressor's effect is kind of just icing on the cake. Anyway, so we're sitting here unmodified and no perks at 70 damage, which is actually not great, to be honest. So let's go ahead and chuck some perks on. And this comes under Rifleman. So we'll chuck on Expert Rifleman, Master Rifleman, and of course, the Basic Rifleman. And to extend our damage output a tiny bit more, we'll find a bloody mess and chuck that on. And that gives us only 129 damage. Now this thing does have a couple of features. Obviously it is a um, very quiet weapon because there's no explosion pushing a projectile out of the barrel. And um, it actually is affected by the Mr. Sandman perk. So you can get sneak attack multipliers up to 3.5 times. Which is a much needed assistance for this weapon getting its damage output up. Of course we've always got the adrenaline perk on. So if we stack kills fast enough we can have our damage do a little bit better. But for insurance policy, we've got ourselves an explosive shotgun. Just if shit gets real and we can't handle it with a crossbow, we'll just use this to get us out of jail for free. So the customization of this weapon is follows. There's only a standard frame. Now I've looked this up on the internet, there might be like a prime scorch killer frame for this which would increase your damage but I haven't come across any of those things just yet perhaps I need to farm some uh, scorch beast to find that out but unfortunately there's no upgrades like optics and the optics on this is really terrible you'll see that in a bit there's no upgrades for the string or anything there's no upgrades for the frame to make it I don't know plastic and tactical like the hunting rifle marksman stock so yeah that's basically what you get like basically all other weapons in the game, this thing can have its ammo crafted on a Tinker's workbench. Be sure to have Super Duper and Ammo Smith whilst you craft them. And four, adhesive, aluminium, plastic and steel, you can make 18 crossbow bolts. And let me tell you, that is actually a really steep um, requirement there. Aluminium and adhesive, yeah, that's pretty uncommon to be honest. You want to hold on to those for actual weapon repairs instead of, you know, making more crossbow bolts. You'll find these out in uh, the wild though, usually you'll find them in ammo crates. In fact, all of the ones I'm carrying now have not been crafted, I've just been gathering them over time and since I've got bandolier too, they haven't been uh, taking up too much weight, so I don't have to craft any, but if you do, there's the requirements. Way too much. So to make the best use out of our sneak attack crit powers with this weapon, we're going to do this at night, as well as having lots of chameleon armor, which do stack. If you want to know how, just ask me. And um, yeah, we'll use this thing and we'll see how we go. Like I said before, the Mr. Sandman perk affects this weapon, so if we were to uh, get a sneak attack critical, we'll get that 3.5 times, because we've also got Covert Operator. Now he's only a super mutant fighter, so we should be able to one-shot him, and there you go. 3.5 times multiplier on that, which is good. And if we can get these kills happening a little bit faster, that'd be all right. Is that an already dead super mutant? I guess another player came through here. We couldn't quite finish off that super mutant warlord there, unfortunately. Maybe if that other super mutant was a weak one, we could kill him as well. Now, for this to be, like, this being a crossbow, you don't expect it to be hit scan, but the bullets, well, the bolts move extremely fast, so... Um, not having to lead targets is a little bit of a plus with this, but when you attack stuff at range, um, you can see the weapon really drop off there. Alright, another super mutant fighter goes down quite easily. Do we have anyone up here? Okay, he's only a butcher. If we can get a headshot on him, that'd be good. It's a little bit hard to aim when you've got both the sights that are terrible and also the chameleon effect. And also, he just twitches at exactly the right moment. I like how he's looking at us there. We we're invisible. Don't think about it too much. Alrighty, what have we got down here? Ah, okay, there's a warlord. That's a that's the kind of enemy that I want to test this thing on. 
not lacking these sights. If you could get a scope on this, like a short scope, that'd be good. Luckily for us, we're able to stay in caution, which means we can constantly produce sneak attack criticals, which is good. And you'll notice there that I actually get some of the crossbows uh, bolts back from corpses. So kind of like the railway rifle, you can get some of the ammo back from your enemies, which makes this thing a little bit more efficient. So maybe me claiming that the um, crafting uh, component cost was too high is a little bit um, set back by the fact that you can retrieve the arrow of a bolt sometimes. So there you go. Not off to a great start, but it's killing stuff at least. Alrighty, so I'm going to try and shoot this bear from range, see if we can't do a little bit of good damage from here. Yeah. See, the damage drop-off for this is really, really quite steep. Even though I'm getting 3.5 times sneak attack criticals, I, I'm pretty sure I could be doing better damage with a basic 10mm pistol. So, yeah. As you can tell, the reload too is also super long, so good luck of using this thing when you're facing a pile of feral ghouls. Now, I'm realizing what the suppressor's effect would be better for, and that would be something like a super sledge, where you can hit them at basically like less than three seconds apart, and that'll basically make sure that they hit you less hard for that entire duration whilst you're walloping them with your hammer. So, possibly this is not the best effect for it, yes. Even still, I do want to try it out a little bit. We'll get this dude in the head first off, see if we can't nail a headshot on him just to get him started. No, I missed. Maybe if I aim in the third person camera, that'd be a little bit, little bit easier. I'm not really sure. Anyways, we'll go ahead and hit him with one, and then before he swipes at me. So, yep, that's got it about half of our health down. So we'll pop a stim pack, shoot him, and... I don't know. I guess you have to be watching the health bar there, but now we're in a little bit of trouble. Can we get out of this situation? I'm sure we can with a little bit of uh, escape artist. We're back into caution now, which means we get more damage, and we'll quickly have a run for it. Back into caution now, and then run once more. Back into sneaky mode. Okay, there's ticks here, which is good. He can attack them whilst I'm reloading. And I'm going to miss that shot, but that's okay. We're still in caution. He's got another tick to destroy. There we go. So without going out of our way to get ourselves great personal injury, you can still do okay with this thing, I guess. But it is outclassed by basically any other um, ballistic weapon in the game. So unless you're being really silent, then you're not really going to get too far with this, I don't think. Okay, this albino deathclaw has spawned on his own, so let's see how we go against him. Well, we got half of his health down there, which is a pretty decent start. And if he's keen to just stand there and take it, that's even better. Well, you can actually go not too badly against deathclaws, I guess, so long as you stay hidden. I'm beginning to uh, paint a picture of this weapon, I think. See the picture painted by the gameplay. This thing is obviously a stealth weapon. Alrighty, let's see if we can make this work in the crazy crowd control situation of the White Spring Golf Club. I don't think we will, but hopefully this thing is quiet enough to allow us to stay hidden from all of the ghoulies. Now, we've lost our 3.5 times sneak attack critical multiplier because it is during the day. Probably could have switched over to, like, two more points of action go to get that working better, but so far, none of the ghouls have really gotten up, so that's alright. Also, the ghouls aren't spawning there. Maybe I've gotten, like, a half spawn of wherever these ghouls are coming from, but still, so far, so good. They haven't really gotten themselves ooh, almost in danger. We'll just sit here for a second and make sure we aren't spotted by anything else. Ah, there's a Wendigo in here. We can't even one-shot a Wendigo. I guess if we got a headshot, we might have gone all right. Okay, but we're now we're in danger, which means it is time to run. And hopefully, we can get ourselves back into caution thanks to Escape Artist. Yes, yes, we can. And now, the Wendigo is a twitchy bastard, so sometimes hitting him is a little bit hard. We've always got bats to give ourselves a little bit of an aiming chance if we feel like it. And there we go. But with that reload speed, if these ghouls had been charging at me, they would have been hitting me, infecting me with all of their horrible, horrible diseases. That's a cool combat rifle. Hey, maybe that'd be better. You weren't legendary. Why are you giving me that? But yeah, maybe a suppressor's assault rifle will be a little bit better than this, eh? 
and another legendary speaking of and I think we might be clear for some reason a lot of the guys haven't decided to spawn in that's another chameleon bit as well I'm just getting all of the cool loot right now aren't I I like how I killed this ghoul setting down look at that another one down there and he comes he goes for a charge but uh, too late I managed to get the shot off before he even got in. So what are we at with adrenaline now? So we are at 60% which gives us 206 damage which is a little bit better but still. I feel like I should have got that kind of damage before adrenaline had anything to do with the equation. There's another one over there. And we we're luckily enough to get him even though we're cloaked. That's only aroma. And, oh, okay, looks like I hit that. And also, you can't pick them up when they're like that, which is a little bit unfortunate. I guess that's got something to do with um, players not griefing each other by firing multiple crossbows. Speaking of multiple crossbows, I reckon it'd be really good having a quad crossbow. I think that is the, that is the legendary effect to get. If you can get that with explosive as well, you might actually have a crossbow worth using. But this one doesn't seem all that great. I'm going to drop off some of the loot I don't need in here, and then we'll move on to a monster. Okay, time to test the might of our crossbow against Swan. Yes, I know that he's not Swan. You don't have to point that out in the comments. I'm not that stupid. I'm going to call him Swan anyway, because he sits in a pond all day, and when you aggro him, he screams Swan. But not on this occasion, apparently. That's okay. So, I think the main... Um, positive thing about this weapon is the fact that it's like completely silent he's gonna have no idea where we're shooting him from because one is a big ugh dumb mutant but um yeah this thing is super quiet we've also got two in snake one in escape artist and all of these chameleon bits as well as stand far so there's gonna be no way he can see us although this kill on him is going to be very long and drawn out we're going to do so without even taking a hit and I haven't been counting how many crossbows we're actually using, but still we're going to get some of them back hopefully because we've fired so many into him. There we go. So we get five back out of that, which is not too bad, I guess. Just the, the speed of the kills isn't really good enough or... Yeah, you... Although you can do that without taking any damage, just the speed of the kills isn't really enough to justify actually using this thing to my mind. Anyways, with that, we'll move on to something else. Knowing that we are pretty much invisible whilst using this weapon, I've got a good feeling that we'll be able to take out the Queen and her friends, just so long as we can actually kill all of her minions before that. That first shot on the glowing Mylurk must have hit his shell. I like how the game actually gives you an indication of where you hit, judging by the sounds that it makes. Because when you do hit the shell, regardless of what you hit it with, you can hear like a metal sound, which as realistic as that isn't, is just a good indicator of where you actually hit. That's only a strangle of Mylurk, so if we got a snake attack on him, we should be able to kill him very easily. And Mylurk kings are a little bit more dangerous. That one's actually legendary, but we'll kill this glowing dude first. Whoops, hit him in the shell once again. We'll just bats him. There we go. And with all of that gathered adrenaline, we can do like a third of his health to him. If he does spot us, we've got that shotgun like I had at the start of the video. But, okay, he's regenerated now. Too bad this isn't instigating. Regardless of that, we can still hit him. It might actually take too long to actually kill him, and we can't actually... Ooh, he's actually hit us pretty hard. It might take too long to kill him, and we'll reset our adrenaline by doing that, so that's going to be a shame if it did. I'm just going to check real quickly. Yeah, okay, we've lost our adrenaline, which is not good. But regardless of that, we've managed to kill this guy. That's not worth it for me. And we're overweight now. Alrighty, let's see if we can't aggro the queen. One of the easier ways to do it is just to get a loud and proud gun. Disturb her water. Don't forget to kill all of the Mylurks before doing this, though. Remember that. Alright, closing in. Can I get a face shot, please? Yep, activated the critical when it was 1% chance to hit. 
and now we should be okay to summon the Milo Queen if there's no more of her, if there's no more crabby dudes around. There she is, let's get started on her, and by get started on her, we're just going to miss the first shot. Unfortunately, she's going to turn her back to us, which means she's got that shell protecting her, but if we let her come a little bit closer. We shouldn't have any problems with being detected, and if Mylurk AI is anything like swans before, we can easily just keep hitting her in the face. Make sure we dodge her random ice spouts, which shouldn't be too accurate. Actually have hit us there. And I, I really doubt that's only a 50% chance to hit. We're right next to her. But as you can tell, although we're getting the sneak attack criticals, we're killing her ever so slowly. So go back to the base. No, it's not good enough. We might have to just keep hitting her in the head without the use of bats. But a nice damage boost from criticals will do us pretty well. Oh, I thought we were in danger for a second. We've actually got that much excess acid on us that so we've actually popped the uh, that life-saving perk thing there, so that's a shame. We'll go for a critical on the face. So unlike Spawn, she's got a projectile on her, which means we have taken quite a bit of damage whilst uh, in this fight, but still haven't been detected, so we're still getting the nice multiplier out of it. But still, this thing just isn't hitting hard enough for me to actually justify recommending this to you, or using it. You're going to need some really, really good legendary effects to actually make this worthwhile. I imagine two-shot explosive would be excellent on this. Like I said before, quad explosive would be good. Anything quad of this thing would be good, even if it's like a VATS enhanced increasing one. Like, more accuracy and more damage with critical shots and VATS would be great. But, for a basic crossbow that barely does much to affect their damage output. Maybe it did save me from those acid spouts there, even though damage at a time over time is. I think it's, it's calculated differently. It certainly was back in Fallout 4, and I imagine it's similar to that in Fallout 76. But I think I'm going to leave things there. That was the suppressor's crossbow. Uh, Bethesda, you need to improve the crossbow. One, by increasing the base damage so it's actually worth using, and two, by adding some modifications that might help it out at range, maybe give it a little bit of a short scope, a reflex side, if you will. Maybe have, like, string attachments that you can improve the string with to make it fire harder, maybe at the cost of reload time. Something interesting like that, just to give this thing a little bit of a boost, otherwise people are going to overlook it, and then someone's put their hard-earned or they're just their time into a weapon that nobody's gonna even use so hopefully that will be a good idea to make this thing actually good thank you for watching guys